Clark, if you please identify yourself and you have five minutes. Thank you. I'm uh, John Klein here representing myself. <coughs> I made a few uh, notes based on the um, EX 14-15 uh, uh, portion of this um, downtown transportation study, uh, the summary. Um, and I also just thought I'd put together a bit of a laundry list of things that transit could be doing differently both downtown and elsewhere. Uh, that I think could just be brought to everybody's attention. Uh, this week I've learned that the city receives uh, $605,000 per year from advertising on the buses, and I'd just like to suggest that that go next year into purchasing a bus to the airport. Um, improved shelters uh, that could be put on uh, 11th Avenue uh, downtown that have doors and are heated in the winter would be a great improvement. Um, another overlooked human element downtown includes access to water and washroom facilities. Uh, right now the Cornwall Center washrooms aren't very convenient for transit users and there's no drinking fountains or even drink vending machines close to where people are waiting for buses. Uh, temporary, uh, this, this relates to a request I made at transit um, last year um, to have an extra stop set up on Wiscana Parkway. Um, there were temporary stops on Wiscana Parkway when it was being repaired at uh, University Drive South. And um, there could be temporary stops put in there again, and it would help a lot of people. I hope uh, Redown Transit will get in touch with me later and, and get details. Um, the R card and leader card um, could be combined. I've brought this up before, and I see City Hall's added another RFID card to its main floor, and I'm wondering why this was done rather than uh, combining uh, our technologies and maybe making them more um, uh, low cost by just having one technology to support. <coughs> uh, another technology that we could be using uh, to improve uh, people who are going through downtown and using transit is uh, selling uh, day passes on the buses. Uh, this technology was in use in Ottawa in 2002. And uh, in 2002, just for your uh, curiosity, Windows XP was about a year old and it's being retired in six days from now. And I just hope that Regina catches up to where Ottawa was before Windows 8 is put out to pasture too. Uh, the City Live, or the, uh, the Transit Live City app. Uh, I'm anxious to see if that'll be improved too. Uh, in the comments in the report, it mentions a dual street transit hub plan for Lawrence Street. And that kind of concerns me because I don't know what a dual street transit hub is, so I'd like that explained, please. Uh, if it means transfers are taking place on both 11th Avenue and on Lawrence Street, uh, like I see that Regina downtown has recommended Lawrence Street as a transfer place, but there's brick walls on one side and no services, so it's not very attractive for people to be transferring buses there. And that kind of worries me because you can also not see around the corner to see if your bus is there to transfer to. And when on a Sunday, for example, you have to wait up to an hour if you miss a transfer, that's really, really inconvenient. Uh, security uh, could be provided from the uh, police service budget instead of paying uh, private security firms. An officer or two could be assigned to travel by transit and walk uh, downtown. They could also be on their bike. Uh, having our police mostly in cars, isolated from citizens they are intended to serve, isn't creating a good working environment for them, nor does it give citizens the opportunity to positively interact with the Regina Police Service. Uh, layover time for a bus uh, needs to be where the drivers can use washroom facilities or pick up food, which 11th uh, Avenue, as I understand, uh, provides people right now. Uh, so adding like less durable buses to downtown uh, for like a shuttle plan would create more transfers for people and make this transit system less useful overall. Uh, the province could be asked for money to um, that what it's spending on the Regina Coppell Health Authority shuttle buses and uh, we could 
give that money towards on transit to provide the same service that people are uh, currently only being offered if they work for the uh, health regions right now. Mr. Klein, you have one minute. Thank you. Uh, the six hundred thousand uh, dollars. Oh, sorry, uh, I covered that point. But my notes went again. Um, turning Hamilton Street into a bike street like Smith and Warren by using Saskatoon's better bike lane plan would move parking into the middle uh, right lane, moving the bike lane where the parking lane exists now, and that would make things very safe and, and effective. And you can use the smart parking meters that have been purchased for 11th Avenue to achieve this. A new parking structure will cram more cars into downtown, increasing congestion downtown on streets at rush hour. And on CKRM this morning, I heard there was a um, low occupancy vehicle lane plan for 11th Avenue and two lanes. So I'd like to know what that's about and how that would improve congestion rather than make it worse. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Are there any questions from the council for the delegation? Council Fraser. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks for your presentation. Just a, a couple questions for you. Um, it doesn't directly speak to this report, but you brought it up. Uh, just could you elaborate on the idea of more stops along West Canada? I'm, I'm not sure exactly. Sure. Um, right now, on the number three bus, which has been redesigned, uh, it's sort of filling in for what the four used to do, which was go from the northwest down through the university to SIAS. So now this number three goes basically from that location through downtown uh, to Eagle Bar and then Syast. But it's missing everybody who lives in um, Hillsdale and Whitmore Park because there's no stops there for them. You know, the people literally have to cross Westcana Parkway, walk up to two kilometers for some people, uh, definitely two kilometers round trip to get to the bus stop when it could just swing around through uh, Kramer Boulevard, do a loop on Parker and Centennial, head back towards Syast. And there's a location that could be set up right by that uh, Kramer Boulevard mall uh, and put stops there, just like there were north of that intersection when they were repairing the street. Okay, thanks for the clarification. One other point, uh, you mentioned about Milwaukee, you can see something you heard on the radio, was that this morning? Yeah, so this morning they, I didn't hear who was interviewed, but they mentioned turning two lanes of 11th Avenue to, uh, they didn't call it low occupancy vehicle, but the implication was that during peak hours it would be basically a, a kiss and ride, the type where you stop and you pick up or let off people like 11th is currently being used in front of Cornwall Center right now, where people are, are legally stopping in the no stopping zone in front of the mall and blocking the bus lane. Okay, thanks. Other questions from council? Seeing none, thank you very much, Mr. Klein.